Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah, I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. Um, this is all great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not the cops, and of herself merely as prey. Uh, will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Okay. Please, could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something <clears throat> really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Okay. The lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it. She regards you and Kim with a sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps reluctantly out of the shadow. The pain lessens. She's carrying a two-barreled front loader. Remain careful. I will. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but you can form sentences. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. That's good. There's only three meters between you and the machine. If you keep her distracted for long enough, maybe. Be careful when you make your move. That'll be it for questions. Bide your time. Okay. Um, how did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets on the floorboards? So, you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Um, she didn't uh, rat you out, by the way, Isabel, the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. Um, why hide the bullet, though? This could have turned out pretty bad for me if you hadn't walked right into 25 bands of ultra-high frequencies. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot, uh, Lely? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. Um... You're right, uh, Klausio was the first to share her suspicions. Oh, I knew the kitten had claws. But not like this. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Um... Your own boys told us you were on the coast. Titus told me. It took some convincing. Um, Titus told me it took some convincing. Oh, fuck. Took <clears throat> some convincing my ass. 
Those guys liked me, I know it. But this is what happens to people who people like. How the fuck do the rest of you get by? Wait, wasn't it you who called me uh, the human can opener? It's not personal, I open them up. I do it by asking questions and I have some for you. Honestly, I don't know how I do it. I just stumbled in here. Can you please explain this shit to me? Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? I did, didn't I? Now you come for me. Fuck them all the same. I do it by asking questions. I have some for you. Um... Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Uh, would you say that Lely was a likable person? I didn't <clears throat> like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Um, you don't feel sympathy for Mercs? It's hard work. Uh, did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. I have other questions. I'm listening. Um, do you have an alibi for when Lely was shot? Um, you have a gun? Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Uh, did you leave any flowers for Klasi on the roof? Um, you're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. Um, did you leave any flowers for Klasi on the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. They weren't just flowers. Uh, they... symbols of revolution. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around? Come on. But Klasia was mourning? I never did understand why, when someone dies, <clears throat> a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. Okay, so you didn't leave Maybells? No, I did not. Um... Do you have an... um... Do you like to hang out on rooftops? Who doesn't? Oh, you probably mean Klausia's rooftop. Sure, I've hung out there. She's got this great antenna. Is that the only reason you hung out on the roof? The view's pretty bomb, too. But you might say the antenna was the main attraction there, yeah. Along with Klausia. Uh, what's so great about, uh, the... about her antenna? It's very powerful. I used it to tune into RCM frequencies. That's how I knew to be prepared for your arrival. Makes sense. So you're sure you didn't shoot the Merc from the roof? Yes, I'm <clears> sure. <throat> In fact, the shot couldn't have possibly come from the roof. Otherwise, we would have heard it downstairs. No one mentioned him in the shot. And a rifle like the one you would have been loud. She is right. I don't think the shot came from the room. Um, uh, you're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. So, heart of gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. No, he didn't. I found my own way in. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? Um, you had a, fina uh, a financial incentive to kill the Merc. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the Union. <laughs> the Lieutenant is unable to articulate his question. She deliberately avoided the name of the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. Okay. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. She turns uh, the knob down just a millimeter. Uh, but you're threatening us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. 
Um, do you have an alibi for when Lely was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon you. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. Um, they did say you left to take a really long leak, 15 minutes. Uh, there was half an hour missing. Uh, you went out. Let's say half an hour. Mm. Maybe the medium length one is the um, golden spot here. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure they also made some funny remarks about it. They always do. I've driven a lot of long haul and chugged a lot of beer, man. <sighs> Can't do either without some power of mind over bladder. And anyway, that wouldn't have been enough time. Hold on, no one takes a 15 minute leak. Look, fuck you, man. I might also have stopped by the bar. She speak of truth. Our investigation, wins from the pain, has shown that 15 minutes was just enough to commit the uh, murder. Wow, now I'm curious. Please, explain. Look, there's a secret way, a secret way from the first floor um, of the whirling to the roof. I yeah. don't know it, but also... She frowns, studying your face. Evaluating your competence as a police officer. The shot couldn't have come from the roof. Or we would have all heard it downstairs. She has a point there. No one mentioned. Uh, the pain stops him from finishing the sentence. Okay, let's take a step back. Yeah? Where? Um, okay. Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. Police radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm. But the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. Um, what happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh. He struggles to finish the sentence. All right, don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few beers, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait, did she also seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Klasia said uh, you knew something was wrong immediately? No, I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her. But, no such luck. She was in some deep shit. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like it'd been hanged. Um, how did you manage to come up with a plan so quickly? It's pretty weird that you came up with this plan right on the spot. Let's just ask. What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. Wait, her idea? Yeah. In cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck. To fake lividity? Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. Showerhead? Resourceful. Um, let's just... I don't know if she's telling uh, a lie or if uh, Clasio was telling a lie. Let's just ask her before we say anything, right? Um, resourceful. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed uh, Lely herself? As I keep telling you cops, we didn't hear anything downstairs. No gunshot, nothing. Okay. But 
Even if this is true, why aren't you worried this nature might lead to... War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, uh, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. What? <laughs> so this is what she was scared to tell Titus. This cop. This cop. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? Yes. You. Everyone says you're his peon. His human can opener. Huh. Through the sudden sharp pain in your head, you hear the lieutenant mumble something to himself. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear through the white noise. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Uh, who's everyone? How do you know this? Um... Everyone in Jamrock. The cops. The criminals. Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name too. Um, tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to la puta madre. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. Uh, la puta madre. I've heard of la puta madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. Uh... No, that was a real question. I'm sorry, I know I'm supposed to know all about this, but I lost my memory recently. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. <clears throat> I'm sure La Buddha Madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. Uh, what did you do to this uh, Madre anyways? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? Now I have Harry can opener in my lair. Fucking Titus. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. Um... When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them anyway? Um... Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. You had two guys and a lady. The guys looked pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. Um, what else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman... The woman was the only one in uniform. All were carrying. That sound about right? I don't know. I have no idea who these people are, literally. Satellite officer Vitmere looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Nuno. We could either take a room here in the Whirly or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Heidelstein. He can give us a ride. I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Yeah, that's right. I was just testing you. They're right outside with guns. No, that doesn't ring any bells. Um, I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Friction. Lock. Set. Run and leave me here. Please delete! Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. Uh, do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? Um, the communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... Her voice trails off into white noise in your head. It feels like an aneurysm approaching. <laughs> 
Okay, we could try to destroy it. Uh, I can't take it anymore. Just go. Don't. Okay, let's let's destroy it. There we go. And we step forward. You did it. The compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell, but... Uh, you're under arrest. Uh, see them fireworks, Kim? Um, you okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. Oh, fuck it. Hmm. Ooh, our rhetoric is not great. Um, let's try to uh, convince her, I suppose. Rhetoric, can we improve that? Rhetoric. Let's level that one up, just in case. Hopefully that makes it better. Uh, I don't want her to die on me here. That would be bad. Accept the changes and close. 72. What are you doing? Problem solving. She mutters. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are. Oh, yes, it is. Let's try. Cross her fingers. She's truly desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know. Um. Maybe I can still talk her out of it, or please, we put our hands up, just walk away. Um, maybe I can still talk her out of it? This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please, just walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. Um, you don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. Good call. Uh, the lieutenant is still unsteady on his feet. Are you sure? Uh, I did my best. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. Um, I, I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. Uh, he points to the back of the cavern. I agree, we should check that out. Anything else in here? Uh, that was intense, wasn't it? <laughs> Uh, oh, there's some stuff here. Let's check that first. Dark water trails into the distance. There is no way out. The barrel? Probably money, right? No. It's, uh, oh, Druamine. I think they thought about us. Yeah, that's good. That's very useful. What's this? Uh, let's look at this first. Eight! Uh, eight real. I'll take it. Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. Okay, that's all we can say about the cooking utensils. There is nothing else here. Let's look into the tent. The plain red tent stands by dispassionately. It was pitched by practiced hands. She's used to camping out. Let's look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. <laughs> In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Uh, shine your flashlight on the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, 
a ghost airship, you also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. That one makes sense to me, yeah. See anything? Let's sift through the magazines. Rager Monthly, Journal of Material Science. More technological digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. Well, let's take it then. You pocket the worn brown leather journal. Okay. Very nice. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. I think we should. I think you're right about that, Kim. Okay, so... We can still check the island for bullet traces. At least we have this now finally crossed off the list. Uh, you found Ruby's journal, read it. Sure. Okay, good. The map? Took me so long to get that map, it's actually laughable if I'm being honest. Okay. Um, let's take a look in here. Interactable. A well-loved journal with uh, with a brown leather cover and a brand name Schneller embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Let's examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name Schneller. Schneller is a stationary brand from Gottwald, beloved among architects and engineers. Mm, Schneller just means faster in German. Uh, also, it reminds me that when I was in school, there was this uh, this little store called uh, Feinkost Schneller near it, where we always used to buy you know energy drinks and stuff like that in breaks. But yeah, okay. She's got good taste and must have taken whatever she recorded here seriously. Um unwind the strap the journal falls open about two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled let's study the handwriting the large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently perhaps too confidently many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins more reminders of my school days <laughs> my cursive is hideous uh, let's flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. Uh, what kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. Sounds like a good idea. Uh, what are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. The way some of those question marks trail off into ellipsis. She was going through a tough time. How far back to, uh, do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Uh, what did you write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. You have no idea what she means. Nah. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. Okay. Uh, anything about La Puta Madre? That name isn't mentioned as far as you can tell. Okay. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Well, let's, let's read the entry from March 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town. 
no doubt to investigate the lynching, but also I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? The call? Did M call her personally? Why? Uh, read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave, or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people, the boys, for example. But experience tells me, did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people, they'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. Okay. Uh, what's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. It looks like she might have been framed. The lieutenant taps, uh, taps on the page. That would be a first, or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. Um, if she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. Um, Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? Um, let's ask that first. Ah, no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her. I wouldn't go so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. Yeah. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than with us. Especially if she has problems with the madre. Um, then who do you think killed the merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... No one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. Sure. Okay then. What do we have here? Return to the whirling and rags. Um find out if we are working for La Puta Madre. Do we have anything here? Oh, the date of birth generator is nearing its conclusion. We could, I think we have enough. Yeah, we have a point now. We could unlock another slot there. I'll keep the point stored for now. It came in handy now that we could put it in rhetoric. Maybe it will happen again that we just need a point to help us out. So I'll keep one, uh, as a reserve, just in case.